Hi, this is Jeremy Moskowitz from gpanswers.com, and today we're going to cover some common group policy troubleshooting techniques. So, you know, that's the trick about group policy, is that it usually works pretty darn well, but uh, every once in a while, it's usually us, the humans, that mess stuff up. The computer's doing just fine. It's, uh, it's something that we did. So what I want to do, I want to cover today some, uh, some common things that uh, uh, I still do. Uh, I make mistakes all the time, and hopefully uh, you make them less than I do. <laughs> but uh, long story short, I want to cover some things that uh, hopefully um, are quick fixes, things that you might want to just check as you're going through uh, something doesn't work perfectly. Uh, what, what are some things you can try out and look for? Well, for me, one of the, one of the mo more common things is, uh, well, first of all, let me go ahead and get Active Directory users and computers up here. This is a very common thing that I do. Uh, that I forget to do is I simply forget to uh, have the right users in the right locations. So if we've got um, you know our eSales users, we want to make sure that the user that we're talking about is actually in the right OU in the first place. So if we're trying to troubleshoot something with eSales user one, we've got to make sure he's actually hanging out under eSales users and he didn't somehow get moved or um, get obliterated or something like that. So that's the uh, that's the first thing. The second thing, and I I make this problem I have this problem all the time is uh, I forget to move my particular computer accounts where they're supposed to go. So I forget to move Win7 Computer 1 or whatever into my eSales desktops. And even when I do that, I then forget to sometimes um, reboot the client machine just to make sure he's got the latest, greatest group policy settings. I make that mistake a lot too. Um, other stuff that is very common is, uh, well, let's take a look here. You can see I've got GPO456. It's linked over to, to uh, to eSales users and uh, everything should be fine, right? Uh, everything looks perfect. Well, you got to really, really squint here, but uh, you'll notice that the icon uh, link is been dimmed down. In fact, just to prove a point, let me show you. Uh, I'll call this another GPO link here. And if you look, the difference between another GPO links icon and GPO 456, you'll see that GPO 456 is uh, been disabled. The link has been disabled, so the powers that it has underneath the hood is not going to do anything. I make that mistake all the time, especially it's just so hard to see. It's just a vi quick visual thing, and it's just really difficult. Another mistake uh, I see a lot, I don't tend to do this one too much, is that if you click on another GPO and you click on the, uh, the details here, um, you'll see that sometimes, uh-oh, all settings are disabled. So long story short, if you've got either uh, half of the GPO disabled using the computer half disabled or the user half disabled, or you've got the whole thing disabled, well, you might see some weird results go on uh, on your client machine. So long story short, those are the things, the top issues that I see that are most usually preventing um, people from getting group policy to work the way they expect, okay? So again, it's usually not the computer's fault. Usually it's just something we forgot to do. So with that in mind, again, I'm Jeremy Moskowitz from gpanswers.com, and uh, thanks for uh, working some group policy troubleshooting stuff out with me today. Take care.